In this lecture, I'm going to be talking about two problems that motivate the important calculus concept of limits. These two problems are the tangent line problem and the instantaneous velocity problem. So the tangent line problem is just the problem of finding the slope of a tangent line to a curve at a particular point. So the idea of a tangent line is that it's going to touch our curve in exactly one point and have the same um, slope and direction of the curve. So we'll often also talk about finding the slope of a curve as being equivalent to the problem of finding the slope of the tangent line to the curve. Um, by the instantaneous velocity problem, we mean a problem where we're interested in finding the velocity of some sort of object at a particular moment in time. Okay, so the first problem that we're going to focus on is this tangent um, line problem. So in this example, we have a curve, y equals 1 over 1 minus x, um, x, and we're interested in finding the equation of the tangent line to this curve at the point p, where p is the point 2 comma negative 1. So I want to find the slope of my curve, or the slope of the tangent line to this point p, um, but I don't know how to find slope through exactly one point, but we do know how to find slope through two points. So let's go back here. We want to find the equation of the tangent line, so we need slope. I don't know how to find the slope just through p, but I do know how to find the slope, say, through two points, p and q. Um, so just to review some terminology here, a line through just the point p would be our tangent line. A line that would go through the point p, q, be something like this, would be a tangent line. So, excuse me, would be a secant line. So our goal here is to look at finding the um, slope of lines through PQ where Q gets closer and closer to P. And that will help us approximate the slope of the tangent line through P. So Q we can think of as having coordinates x comma 1 over 1 minus x. And so we can talk about finding the slope of MPQ, or the secant line PQ, as rise over run here, 1 over 1 minus x minus negative 1 all over x minus 2. Okay. So we're going to be interested in looking at um, finding these slopes for values of x that are closer and closer to 2. So let's see what that's going to look like. So we've got two different pictures given to us here. We've got our point P, which is our point 2 comma negative 1, and we have a point Q. Now our x value that we're using for Q in this first example is 1.5. So Q must have coordinates 1.5 comma 1 over 1 minus 1.5. So our slope of that secant line, PQ, is going to be 1 over 1 minus 1.5 minus negative 1 all over 1.5 minus 2. So if we go ahead and do that arithmetic, we see that we're getting a slope of 2. Okay. So what if we look at an x value that's a little bit closer to 2? So again, I've got p here to negative 1, and I've got my point q. But now I'm going to say x is 1.9. So q has coordinates 1.9 comma 1 over 1 minus 1.9. So now our slope of this line is 1 over 1 minus 1.9 minus negative 1 all over 1.9 minus 2, which turns out to give us a slope of 10 ninths, or about 1.1 repeating. So we see that as we're moving our point Q closer and closer to P, we're getting a better approximation of the tangent line that would go through our point P. So if we keep doing this, we're seeing that as we get closer and closer to 2, our secant line slope is getting closer and closer to 1. So this idea of um, getting closer and closer to something is the idea of a limit. So we, here we can actually say that the limit as x goes to 2 of this quantity of 1 over 1 minus x minus negative 1 all over x minus 2 turns out to be actually equal to 1. And this is our slope of the tangent line through our point P. Okay. So remember our original question was to um, find the slope 
excuse me, find the um, actual equation of that tangent line to our point P. Well, now that we've got our slope of the tangent line and our point, we can use the point-slope form of an equation to write down the equation of the tangent line. So just recall that the point-slope form is y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. So we have y minus a negative 1 equals 1 times x minus 2, which gives us y equals x minus 3, as the equation of the tangent line to our curve 1 over 1 minus x through our point P. Okay, so let's look at another example here where maybe we need to find um, the slope of a tangent line except we're not given um, an algebraic equation like we were before but we're given a table of values. So here we've got a problem where we have a tank that holds a thousand gallons of water which drains from the bottom of our tank in half an hour and the values in our table are showing the volume of water remaining in the tank in gallons after various um, time periods after 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, and 30 minutes. And we're interested in using this information to estimate the slope of the tangent line at the point P where P is the point 15 comma 250. So we're going to use the same idea that we used before, but we're going to have to make a little bit of a modification to it. So here's our point P in the table. I know that um, I'd like to um, find the slope of a, a secant line and then take um, a second point Q here and make it closer and closer to P. But here I only have discrete information. I don't have any information about what's happening at um, 16 minutes or 15.5 minutes. So the best I can do is find here the slope of PQ, a secant line PQ through the points 15 comma 250 and 20 comma 111. And maybe also the slope um, between P and R to get me um, an idea of what the slope might be through just the point P. So the slope through um, PQ is going to be 111 minus 250 over 20 minus 15, which is going to give us negative 139 over 5 or negative 27.8. And if I look at the slope between P and R, I'm looking at, let's see, 444 minus 250 over 10 minus 15 which is giving me a slope of 194 over negative 5 or negative 38.8. Now notice that neither one of these is probably our um, actual slope through P. One's probably a little bit high and one's probably a little bit low. But we could um, use this information and estimate the slope of P by taking the average. So we're going to say that Our slope of our tangent line here is approximately maybe negative 27.8 plus negative 38.8 divided by 2. So we're going to estimate the slope of the tangent line as negative 33.3. So we're not computing um, the exact limit in this case because we don't have all that information, but we can use this table to get an approximation of the slope of our tangent line. So one thing we also want to focus on in this particular example is what does this slope that we just found actually represent? So we know this is a slope of the tangent line to this point P, or approximately the slope, but what would be the units on that? Well, if we go back and look at the computations that we did, I was subtracting gallons and dividing them by minutes. So these numbers that we found are actually rates that are in gallons per minute. So this number that we found here is telling us that at 15 minutes, or after 15 minutes, which is our point P, the water is draining at about 33.3 .3 gallons per minute. Okay, so we can interpret that rate in the context of this problem. Now let's look at the instantaneous velocity problem. In this example, we're told that a ball is thrown into the air with a velocity of 40 feet per second, and its height in feet t seconds later is given by y equals 40t minus 16t squared. We're interested in finding the instantaneous velocity of the ball after two seconds. In other words, we want to know what the velocity of the ball is at t equals two. 
So similar to our tangent line problem, we don't have a way to um, find the velocity at a particular point in time. So we need to use information about what's happening at some interval that contains that um, piece of time. So we're interested in computing average velocity over smaller and smaller time intervals from two to some time t. So our formula for average velocity is always just our change in position divided by our time elapsed. So that means we're going to be looking at doing y of t, what our position is at time t, minus y of 2, over t minus 2. And we're going to do this for values of t that are getting closer and closer to 2. So we're going to see that this instantaneous velocity problem is really very similar to our problem of finding the slope of a tangent line. So here we're looking at our graph now of our um, equation here that's telling us our height of our ball, y equals 40t minus 16t squared. And I've got my point t equals 2. And then now I'm also looking at the point t equals 2.5. So my average velocity on the interval from 2 to 2.5 is my um, distance here, which is going to be y of 2.5 minus y of 2 divided by my time elapsed, which is going to be 2.5 minus 2. So if I plug 2.5 into my equation here, or I can also see that at 2.5 I'm at a height of 0. I've got 0 minus y of 2. Well, if we plug 2 into here, we get that it has a height of 16 feet. So we've got 0 minus 16 divided by a half which gives us that our average velocity is negative 32 feet per second. So we see that the average velocity over this time interval is equivalent to the slope of the secant line between those two points. So m secant is negative 32, and we can also interpret that slope of the secant line as the average velocity that our ball is traveling over that time interval. Now if we look at um, an interval that's a little bit smaller, let's go from say um, 2 to 2.1. So I've got t equals 2 and t equals 2.1. I'm going to get a better um, approximation of what the speed might actually be at 2. So I'm looking at y of 2.1 minus y of 2 divided by 2.1 minus 2. So again, if we plug 2.1 into our height equation, we see that we've got a height of 13.44 minus our height at 2 seconds, which is 16 divided by our time elapsed, which is a tenth of a second in this case. So if we do this computation, we're getting an average velocity of negative 25.6 feet per second. So this is our average velocity over this time interval. It's also the slope of the secant line between those two points. So we can see that if we're going to um, look at finding the average velocity of these smaller and smaller time intervals, that's going to be the same thing as um, looking at secant lines over um, or between two points where one point is getting closer and closer to the point that we're interested in finding the slope of the tangent line at. So this instantaneous velocity problem is equivalent to our slope of the tangent line problem. So let's see what our um, result ends up being for this example. So we know that we want to look at smaller and smaller time intervals. So we've got the length of our time interval getting smaller and smaller here. Our interval length is approaching zero. And we see that in our time interval, we've got that second point here is getting closer to two. which is the point that we're interested in finding the instantaneous velocity at. We see that when we've got our um, computations for average velocity that we did before, but we see if we do this over um, time intervals that are even smaller, we're getting closer and closer to negative 24. So it looks like our instantaneous velocity is equal to the limit as t goes to 2 of y of t minus y of 2 over t minus 2, which is equal to negative 24 feet per second. So notice that this formula that we've got here is very similar to the kind of formula that we would have for finding um, the slope of the tangent line. 
Here we can also think about looking at this in terms of not just this uh, second time point getting closer and closer to 2, but actually the length of our interval getting smaller and smaller. So we could also write this as a limit as h goes to 0, where h is the length of the interval, and say that the limit of y of t plus a little bit, y of t plus h, minus y of 2 all over h, the length of that time interval, is equal to negative 24 feet per second. Okay, so we've just shown that at t equals 2, our ball in this problem is traveling at negative 24 feet per second. Or we could also say that the ball is traveling at 24 feet per second, but in a downward direction. That's what that negative sign indicates in the context of velocity. Um, so this is the end of... Um, the lecture on 2.1, we'll be talking more about um, limits, limits of functions um, in class next time, and please let me know if you have any questions.